Okay, so remember, no bell work um, today or this week. Um, but you do need to get your homework out, and Mrs. Pruitt's going to come around and check your homework. Um, hopefully you did it all, and it'll be easy check. If you didn't do it all, tell her how many you didn't do. Um, out of three points, I told her that she could ask you what you deserve out of three, because I know you'll be all honest people and give yourself a, an appropriate number. Um, so if the homework's been checked already, then I'm going to go on. If the homework hasn't been checked, then just pause this video until we're ready to go over the homework. Okay, so I'm going to open my book here to the right page, and I'm going to put up the answers here so you can check your answers, and then I'll go over a couple of them. So I think these are all the problems I've highlighted the answers here. The first few, hopefully you were able to just use those theorems, setting things equal to each other. Notice on number 12, I've lost my pen Notice on number 12, right, they ask you for EG, so that means this is 5 and this is 5, so together it gives you 10. Uh, I helped a few people in 4th hour yesterday with 27 uh, and 28. you got to kind of match up what you're looking for there. They tell you that's the in center, so just like the one in, in our notes, you have to do Pythagorean theorem. So make sure you set that up correctly, right? So like for 27, you could say PB squared plus 10.9 squared equals that hypotenuse, which is 13 squared. And notice they just gave the decimal um, to get that. <coughs> so how do you do 28? Well, the in-center theorem tells us that all three of these are the same. So if PB is 7.1, then that means that um, this is also... 7.1, right? DP is also 7.1. So to find DE, which is right here, you could say DE squared plus 7.1 squared equals the hypotenuse there, which is 14.9 squared. Um, then they ask us to find some angles, angle DAC. Well, that one's nice if you remember that in center has to do with um, angle bisectors, so it's just 33. And angle DEP, kind of like the one that we did of, this is also an isosceles triangle, it turns out to be. Okay? If you have other questions I didn't answer, please talk to each other. Maybe pause the video if you need to to talk to each other. Um, as uh, the last two that I gave you here, determine whether there's enough information to determine the value of x. Explain your reasoning. Be really careful on this, all right? So a lot of people on 32 want to say that yes, um, that's enough to say that x is 5. But remember that you have to know that you're finding the distance from that point. So you have to know the only way that that x is equal to 5 is if you know that both of those are right angles. And this is where they don't tell us we can't assume that's true. So we have to say we don't know that that's enough information. I kind of the same idea on 33. People want to say, well, X has to be 48. It looks like it, right? But we don't know that. They have to tell us if they would have told us these segments are equal, then we could have used that converse theorem and said then yes the angles are congruent so kind of 32 and 33 kind of remind us that we can't just jump the gun there we can't make assumptions that aren't true about those problems okay so i have a homework quiz for you and so remember you can keep your homework out you can keep your notes out to help you um i've printed off the homework quiz and so mrs pruitt's going to pass that out don't forget to put your name on it, and just like always when you're done, you can turn it over, or Mrs. Pruitt might give you different directions to, to come turn it in when you're done. Um, this shouldn't take more than five minutes. If you can't read it, I will put it up here. I'll actually go ahead and do that. Just don't yell the answers out. So here is the homework quiz. 
and just go ahead and pause the video um, until everyone's finished with the homework quiz and turned it in. Okay, so homework quizzes should all be collected. If that's not true, please pause the video because I'm going to go over the answers to the homework quiz. Um, so no one else still has homework quiz, right? Okay, so uh, let's look over this. In the figure A is the circumcenter. Um, find LO. If LO equals this and ON equals this. So remember, circumcenter is the point of the perpendicular bisector. So that means we know LO is equal to ON. So for number one, we could say 8Y plus 9 equals 12y minus 11. So we get 20 equals 4y, y equals 5 should be the answer to number 1. Number 2 says find x if the measure of angle APM equals 7x plus 13. So APM, that's this angle right here. And notice I draw a square on it because circumcenter is the point uh, with a perpendicular bisectors, which means that 7x plus 13 has to equal 90. So that means 7x equals, what, 77. So x equals 11. That should be the right answer to that. <laughs> Number 3, an would be this segment here. And AM would be this segment here. And the circumcenter theorem says that those are congruent to each other. So let's see, this is number two, this is number one. So number three, we should say 4R minus 8. I'm going to go and distribute that and say 6R minus 33. So I'm going to add 33 and subtract 4R. What is that? 25. 25? Did I do that right? Yeah. So R equals 25 halves or 12 and a half, I believe. Um, 4 and 5 says point D is the in center. So remember, in center is where the angle bisectors meet. Um, list any figures congruent to each figure. So DG, the incenter theorem says that those are all congruent. So you should say DG is equal to DE, which is congruent to DF. And angle DCF, DCF, that's right there. So the only one we know it's congruent to is angle A. You could argue that this is going to be an isosceles triangle because the other ones we did like this were isosceles. Um, so I don't know if you said that or not about the other ones, but I'm going to go with um, angle ACE right now as my only answer. The number six says, which of the following statements about the circumcenter is false? So the circumcenter is a perpendicular bisector, right? So let's make sure the ones we know are true. C is true. It is the point where the perpendicular bisectors intersect. So C isn't the right answer. It is the center of a circumcised circle. That's true. I showed you that yesterday. Um, it can be located outside the triangle. We also did that yesterday. So I think by process of elimination, A is the one that's false. Um, it is not equidistant from the sides, right? That it's equidistant from the angles. Equidistant from the sides are the in center. So A should have been the right answer to that. Remember, you can retake a homework quiz. Obviously, you can't do that today because I'm not here. But you could do that after break um, when you get this returned to you. Uh, so you sh need to have some notes now. So if you haven't had the notes passed out yet, go ahead and pause. If they are passed out, then we're just going to keep going. So, oh, that's, um, 
medians and altitude here. I just got a couple of vocab words and some more theorems for you. Again, remember you can use these theorems on your test. There's some really cool things. Um, There's some really cool uh, things on GeoGebra with medians and altitude, but since I'm not here today, we're not going to get into that. But after break, or if you're bored over break and want to get on GeoGebra at home, you could do that. Uh, so first, I got some definitions for you. Um, if we're talking about triangles here, right? Like you might think of median as mean, median, and mode, same word, but in triangles. Oh, what is the median of a triangle, then we're talking about a segment with endpoints being a vertex in the midpoint of the opposite side. Let's see if I can draw a triangle here for you. So if I was going to, let's, I'm just going to wing this. I know that's not very good to do, but I don't want to waste a lot of time here. So that was the midpoint. The median just connects the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So that's not a perpendicular bisector because it doesn't make a perpendicular line with that segment, but it does bisect that segment still. So those are still the same. Um, and so if I did this one to the midpoint over here, let's say that's the midpoint, then that, <laughs> that would be my median. And then this one would be like this. And obviously I didn't do a very good job because those are all supposed to meet in a lovely uh, spot there. And then the other vocab word I have, which hopefully you've heard of before when you're talking about area of a triangle, the altitude of a triangle is the segment from a vertex to the line containing the opposite side, and it's perpendicular to the line containing that side. So, so it's a segment from the vertex to the opposite side, and it's perpendicular to the opposite side. So from the vertex to the opposite side, <laughs> and it's got to be perpendicular, right? So it's not going to always be in the center. That one's kind of in the center. But like if I did this one, and this is where GeoGebra would be really cool because we could make sure that it's perpendicular, but right? it's not. Sometimes it's going to be really far over, right? but that's the altitude, all right? So just like yesterday, we talked about perpendicular bisectors and angle bisectors. Today, we're going to talk about special things about medians and altitudes. So when you have the median, so look at this lovely triangle, way better than what I drew. They have those medians drawn in, and just like um, the in-center and the circum-center from yesterday, they all meet at this point. And it is called the centroid, right? And instead of like being equal, you can say that the medians of a triangle intersect at a point called the centroid, and it is two-thirds of the distance from each vertex 
to the midpoint of the opposite side. So notice, if we said this, AP, so from the vertex to the centroid, is two-thirds of the whole side. So we would say that AP is two-thirds of this whole segment. So we would say that AP is two-thirds of AK. So we can say AP is like two-thirds, and PK is like one-third, of the entire segment and together they add up to the entire segment and we can say that with all of these so look at those for a second bp right bp is going to be two-thirds of this entire line so we can say bp is two-thirds of bl and cp is two-thirds of that entire line which is cj and remember you don't have to memorize this you got to just be able to use it so let's look at this uh, example here. It says in triangle XYZ, the centroid, right, so the key part on your tests and quizzes is knowing what they give you. If they give you the centroid, you know to use the centroid theorem. They tell us that YV equals 12, so that's this entire segment. It says find YP and PV. Well, if you're really good at fractions and thirds, you're probably going to be able to tell me this without even doing any work. But we could use this theorem that says YP, right? That's the from the vertex to the centroid. YP is two thirds of the entire segment, which is YB. And YV is 12. So two thirds of 12 um, is just eight, right? Think about if you broke 12 up into three equal parts, right? One third of 12 is four, so four, four, and four. That's how I kind of think about it. So anyway, we could say YP equals 12. So PV, what's left over? If the whole thing is 12, and you know this is eight, what does PV have to equal? Well, 12 minus eight is four, right? Because four plus eight has to add up to the whole thing. What about this one? In triangle ABC, CG is 4, find GE. So on this one, instead of giving us the whole thing, they tell us this is 4, and they want us to find this. And again, if you're pretty good at fractions and understanding 2 thirds and 1 third, um, you're probably going to be able to get this answer really quickly. But for people that don't see it, I want to show you how you can always use the equation. So we can say that CG is equal to two-thirds, right? Two-thirds of the entire segment, which is CE. Well, now on this one, they gave me CG is four. So to get rid of that two-thirds, what could I do? If I could divide by two-thirds, or if I don't want to have to use my calculator, I could just multiply by the reciprocal of that, right? And that means that 3 halves times 4, 3 times 2 is 6, that this entire segment is 6. So if this part's 4, what does that mean that GE has to be? 2, right? Because 4 plus 2 gives me 6. Or again, if you're pretty good at seeing two-thirds is four, then one-third would just be half of that, because together that gives you six, however you want to give me that. So the answer here, don't give me six as the answer, they asked me what GE was, which is two. Okay, what else do I have? Oh, my microphone just fell. Alright, I got one more word for you here. If we're talking about um, the altitudes of a triangle, all right? So those are the from the vertex to the opposite side that makes a right angle with the opposite side. From the vertex to the opposite side, from the vertex to the opposite side. Again, concurrent lines, and you can see already, 
But um, where those intersect is called the orthocenter. So we now have the incenter, the circumcenter, the centroid, and the orthocenter. Um, and there's no special relationship between these. Um, it just says that the lines containing the altitudes intersect at a point called the orthocenter. So we don't have any relationship about how they equal something, like there's two thirds or anything. Um, but what we do know is that it's perpendicular, which means we can use what we know about perpendicular lines and their slopes to find out um, points here. So let's look at this example. It says the vertices of triangle ABC are negative 2, 2, 4, 4, and 1, negative 2, which are graphed for us already. Find the coordinates of the orthocenter. Now this is a lot of work. There's an example, uh, you have a worksheet for homework today, and there's an example on that worksheet kind of going through it step by step. So if you want to uh, look at that as you're doing these. To help you. But it takes a lot of work because you have to be able to find the midpoint, uh, or no, not the midpoint. Um, you have to be able to find um, where they intersect the other side so it's perpendicular. So step one, you got to find the slope of um, each of these segments. So like if I found the slope of AB, so the slope of AB would be 4 minus 2 over 4 minus negative 2 or 2 over 6, which is 1 third. Well, I want to find the line that's perpendicular to that, so I need a slope that's negative 3, right, it's opposite reciprocal, and I want it to intersect this line from this point. So I need it to go through the point 1, negative 2. So I need to write that equation, right? So I can say y minus y equals negative 3 times x minus 1. Or if I work that out, I get negative 3x plus 3. Subtract 2. The altitude equation would be, for that 1, is y equals negative 3x plus 1. So that would be a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of negative 3. So if I went up 3, I would go back 1. If I went down 3, I would go over 1. And that would be the altitude from C to AB. Maybe I didn't need to do that much work, because maybe I could have just found the slope and then counted from that point. Since this is multiple choice, you might be able to get the answer already, but let's uh, let's do another one. So let's look at from B, let's find the perpendicular to this side. So let's see if I can make this a little bit less work for you. You have to do one of these at your homework, so make sure you're paying attention, or you can look at the example in the book or on the worksheet that I give you. But step one, find the slope of the line that you want to make it perpendicular to. So I'm first going to find the slope of AC. Remember, rise over run, so I'm going to take 2 minus negative 2 over negative 2 minus 1, and that's going to be 4 over negative 3. And instead of writing the equation, what if we try this? We know, okay, so we need our perpendicular slope is the opposite reciprocal of this, so that's going to be a slope of positive 3 fourths. And we know that we want to go through 4, 4. So instead of writing the equation, let's try this. What if I start at 4, 4, and I just make a slope of 3 fourths? So I could go up 3 and over 4, but that's going to go off my graph. So I'm going to go down 3 and back 4. Down 3 and back 4. And look, then I didn't have to do the slope intercept form to find that point. And you can see already that they both, those two intersect at the point um, 1, 0. So you really don't have to find the third one if it's multiple choice. But if it's not multiple choice, I'm just going to show you really quickly here. Or the last one, from, don't we do that on the From A 
to this line segment so I can find the slope of BC, which would be 4 minus negative 2 over 4 minus 1, and that would be 6 over 3 or 2. So my perpendicular slope is the opposite reciprocal of that, which would be negative 1 half. And it's coming from point A, which is negative 2, 2. So make your slope down 1 over 2, right? Start here. Down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. And look that it intersects. It's a right angle. And we can see that that is my orthocenter, which in this case is the point 1, 0. Graph paper is really nice on those. Um, because you can you can count your slope or make a really nice graph. I don't know that the worksheet has graphs, so I'll try to remember to set some graph paper out um, so you can use that as you're doing those problems. All right, so that one's going to take a little bit of work. Okay, the last thing I have for you is just a summary table, and this is in your book. It's a really nice summary. If you haven't started making your um, cheat sheet, this kind of summarizes the last two days um, of Chapter 5. So it gives you the name of the, the segment that they give you, what it looks like, the point of concurrency, what is that special name called, and then the properties, and then what it looks like in the triangle. A really nice table. So perpendicular bisector. Does anybody remember what that point's called where they intersect? The circumcenter, because remember we can circumscribe that circle around it. And remember that the circumcenter is equidistant from each vertex. So looking at this picture over here, right, the circumcenter is the, is the same distance from each vertex. Then we have the angle bisector. Angle bisector bisects an angle, and that point of concurrency is called the in-center. And remember that the in-center for a triangle is equidistant from each side of the triangle. So here's my in center. Each one of these is the same. And then the two new ones today, the median. Median comes from the vertex and intersects at the midpoint of the opposite side. So it kind of helps the median equals midpoint. But it's not perpendicular. And it's called the centroid. And the centroid has that property of the two thirds property, right? So it's two-thirds of the distance from each vertex to the midpoint of each side. So I'm not going to write all over this, but like on this one, we could say BR is two-thirds, RD is one-third. Or you could say BR is two-thirds of the entire segment, which is BD. And you can do that for each one. And then the last one, altitude, we don't really have a special relationship for altitudes, but you want to know an altitude is from the vertex perpendicular to the side opposite, and that is called the orthocenter. And just remember that the lines containing the altitudes intersect at a point called the orthocenter, and that's the one where you have to do a little bit of work with the slopes. All right, so that's a really good way to review those four things. So I have a worksheet for you today. It's not that much work. Um, I want you to keep it, even if you finish it, I want you to keep it until Monday because it's going to be your 5-2 homework. That means you got to keep track of it until the test. And I will check it on Monday. Um, do the best you can. You can talk to the sub about whether or not um, you're allowed to work together depending on how much time is left and if you're actually working. Um, get this done, and I will see you after break.